That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So, as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans to ever walk on the moon, their extraordinary achievement turned the pair into instant worldwide heroes. In our last video, a curious mind among you left a thought-provoking comment about the possibility of life on the moon. We'd like to thank our fellow subscriber for the contribution, and we encourage you to also drop your ideas for future videos in the comments below. Now let's buckle up, because today we dive into the mysteries of lunar habitation. Is it possible to sustain life on the moon or even outer space as a matter of fact? Stay tuned, because you'll find out the answer soon enough. Companies like the United Launch Alliance and Lockheed Martin are crafting blueprints for lunar living, while Elon Musk dreams of Mars colonization with SpaceX. But are these ambitious plans grounded in reality? We took it even further and unraveled all of the details from the Moon, Mars, and beyond to make sure we tell you everything you need to know. Living on the moon is no easy feat, and there are plenty of problems that we'll need to solve before we can pack our bags. Let's start with these challenges one by one. You have probably already heard of Elon Musk's ambitious project of a tiny modular home that can be built anywhere in the world that looks just like a box of fried potatoes and can give you all the benefits of your dream home for only $15,000. Sure, while one rocket launch costs him $4 billion. Okay, okay, let's not forget our idea here. We'll leave Uncle Elon aside for now. First, how will we get power on the moon? In order to live on the moon, we'll need a reliable and renewable energy supply. Although NASA is developing power generation systems that could support longer stays on the lunar surface, additional energy infrastructure will be needed to make human settlement on the moon a reality. Scientists are already working on a variety of solutions to enable solar power generated during the day to be stored and used at night. However, the lunar environment presents unique challenges. Solar energy, for example, is also available on the moon, but the lunar night is exponentially colder and longer than the night here on Earth. Many terrestrial energy solutions may not hold up to the moon's extreme environment. That's why NASA is looking at a number of potential technologies that could help address how we'll get power on the moon, where we need it, when we need it. Second, how will we fix the problem of energy storage? Energy storage systems, such as batteries and fuel cells, could play a big part in enabling settlement on the moon. Batteries especially have come a long way in the last decade in terms of important technical metrics like efficiency, energy density, and cost. However, most terrestrial energy storage systems are not built to withstand the extreme temperatures, darkness, and dust that are present on the moon. As a result, energy storage systems systems for the lunar environment may require different materials, better safety systems, and the ability to store energy for longer periods of time. Most importantly, where are we going to live on the moon? It's no secret that the moon isn't exactly a hospitable environment for humans. If we're going to live on the moon, there is a lot that we need to do to make it safe and comfortable. NASA Centennial Challenges has already started exploring this, but here are some big obstacles that will need to be overcome. Number 1. Extreme Conditions The moon's environment is not nearly as easy to live in as Earth's. If we were to live on the moon, one thing we would have to contend with is toxic lunar dust. Apollo 17 astronauts complained that the dust made their eyes water and made their throats sore. If we were to stay on the moon for longer periods of time, the effects would likely be far more dangerous. Lunar dust isn't the only issue. Because of the moon's sparse atmosphere, there is no protection from meteorites or radiation. The temperature fluctuations on the moon are also intense. Can't exactly call the temperature on the moon comfortable. During the day, the surface warms up to 127 degrees Celsius. That's 260 Fahrenheit. And at night, the temperature can drop to minus 173 degrees Celsius. That's minus 279 Fahrenheit. 
To make the moon habitable, we would need to live in shelters. In addition to protecting us from meteorites, radiation, and toxic lunar dust, a sealed shelter would allow us to breathe. Number 2. Breathable Air Taking a breath on the moon would be deadly. The moon technically does have an atmosphere, but the gases are so spread out that they aren't much help for breathing. Another potential roadblock is the high levels of radiation on the moon. Since the moon doesn't have the same thick protective atmosphere as the Earth, particles can get to the lunar surface and cause damage to plants. Some sort of shield or blocking mechanism, such as a lunar greenhouse, may be necessary to grow plants on the moon. If you find yourself on the moon in the afternoon, then within a few seconds, instead of tanning, you'll get burned by solar radiation. On Earth, the ozone layer protects us from the dangerous ultraviolet radiation of the sun. And on the moon, you won't have such protection. In addition, it will be unbearable to stand on the hot surface. The idea of living on the moon is not as enticing now, is it? Living on the moon is still a giant leap, and as we peer into the cosmic depth, we realize we're nowhere near yet. But just for a moment, let's forget the moon. Is it possible to live anywhere in space? Think of those blockbuster movies, the ones where space adventures unfold on made-up planets. They hire experts to keep the science believable. Meanwhile, surviving on a messed-up Earth is a storyline we're all familiar with. Now, with all our fancy tech, the idea of living on other planets also seems tempting. But can we really leave Earth and forget all our problems? Nope, those stories miss a big point. What makes a planet livable for us? Earth-like in bucks isn't the same as what it means for someone thinking about surviving far away. It's not just about finding a planet with the right size and temperature, it's about finding one that grew up with us for billions of years. Our survival is tied to Earth's team of living things, billions of them doing their job to keep us alive. Without them, our dreams of leaving Earth are pointless. Look at the facts. Earth is the only place that's got our back. No backup plan, no planet B. Our future is right here, in the mix of life on Earth. Back in 1991, an experiment unfolded within the confines of Biosphere 2. Eight brave souls called it home for two years. Now, imagine this place, a 3.14-acre haven where scientists crafted mini-Earths. Picture an overgrown botanical garden, but more bizarre. An ocean, mangrove wetlands, a tropical rainforest, a savanna grassland, and a foggy desert, all neatly tucked away, imitating different corners of our planet. In September 1991, Four women and four men, who were called Biospherians, in NASA-style jumpsuits, would volunteer to enter Biosphere 2 and live inside without exiting the structure for two years. Each one of these people were trained to do specific tasks during the mission, and of course, there was a doctor among them. The mission wasn't just about studying Earth's ecology, it was a rehearsal for a bigger plan. Figuring out how humans could survive beyond Earth. To live in space, we'd need a self-contained, self-sustaining home. And that's exactly what our beloved Elon Musk has tried to achieve. Breaking a bit from our subject, back in 2021, Musk stated that he wants to establish a permanent residence on the moon, also mentioning the disappointment of 50 years passing by since the last moon landing. Establishing a base on the moon allows for the study of long-term human habitation in space, including life support systems and resource utilization, acting as a stepping stone for missions to Mars and beyond. Musk has mentioned the importance of using local resources, such as lunar regolith, soil, and water ice to support the base's infrastructure. Technologies for recycling air, water, and waste could be implemented to reduce the need for continuous resupply from Earth, creating a self-sustainable habitat. His ambitious plan to create a sustainable moon base, or even cities on Mars, is unfortunately nowhere near to happening, considering his many failed attempts to 
create the perfect environment. Despite all of this, Elon is assuring us that by the end of the year 2025, his dream of humans becoming a spacefaring civilization, a multi-planet species, will become a reality. Alright, now back to our mission. Here's the catch. The experiment wasn't quite successful. Oxygen, water, and food became the scarce commodities. A dilemma not too dissimilar from what future lunar or Martian settlers might face. It was initially hoped that the artificial atmosphere was merely stabilizing itself. But as time passed, it was clear there was something wrong. Wasn't until a year and four months into the mission that tanker trucks with 31,000 pounds of liquid oxygen was sent to the site to pump it inside. So, what caused this massive failure of Biosphere 2.0 to create and maintain its own oxygen levels? After some research, it was found that bacteria in the soil was the culprit. And if that weren't enough, interpersonal conflicts and psychological hiccups added their own twists, disrupting both the first and second missions. Let's get real about Mars, the planet that sparks most of the planet-hopping speculations. It's about half the size of Earth and basks in around 40% of the Sun's warmth. To astronomers, Mars appears as the Earth's identical twin, and it's been buzzing in the headlines lately as a potential outpost for humanity. But before we pack our bags for the red planet, let's delve into the prospects of long-term habitation on Mars. We've been looking for life on Mars for a long time, and while NASA hasn't found any evidence of life now, we found lots of evidence that Mars could have supported life in the past. There's lots of pieces of evidence that say there was once a huge ocean on Mars and an atmosphere that could have supported life, but there's still a lot of it's a frigid, dry world with a thin atmosphere, not to mention those infamous global dust storms that can stretch on for weeks. The average surface pressure, less than 1% of Earth's. Living without a pressure suit in this atmosphere, impossible. Surface temperatures swing from a somewhat warm 30 degrees C, 86 degree F in summer, to a bone-chilling minus 140 degrees C, minus 220 F in winter, thanks to Mars's thin atmosphere. And terraforming Mars for long-term human habitation, well, that's a whole other challenge. Despite these glaring hurdles, the idea of transforming Mars into a cozy home persists, but Mars needs a thickened atmosphere to match Earth's warmth. And the most popular solution involves releasing carbon dioxide into the Martian surface. Sounds great, but here's the kicker. Every method proposed to release Mars's carbon requires tech and resources way beyond our current capabilities, and a recent NASA study it tells us there's not even enough CO2 on Mars to warm it up sufficiently. But let's say, hypothetically, we find enough CO2. We're still left with an atmosphere we can't breathe. Earth's atmosphere has a cozy 0.04% CO2. Pumping Mars up to Earth's atmospheric pressure would mean CO2 levels that would make us drowsy at 1% and straight up suffocate us at 10%, even with abundant oxygen. The absolute best case scenario for terraforming Mars leaves us with an atmosphere unfit for human breath, and achieving it is likely years beyond our current tech and economy. So here's the scoop on turning Mars into a home. Realistically, habitat domes on its surface might be the way to go. Picture this, structures with cozy internal conditions for human survival. But, and there's always a but, maintaining these domes brings a whole new set of challenges. Why? Well, there's this pressure thing. The habitat inside would be rad for humans. Any breach in those domes would cause instant depressurization. The air we need to breathe would slip into Mars's thin atmosphere. Living on Mars would mean being on constant alert and suffocation. Yep, a daily threat. So maybe some other planet if not Mars. Now let's have a look at the numbers. Kepler, the ultimate exoplanet telescope, clocked over 900 Earth-sized planets in our galaxy. Imagine, 90 billion Earth-ish planets out there. It's tempting to think we'd find an Earth twin, 
right? Here's the hitch. Those planets are light years away. Mars, our next door neighbor, is a whopping 225 million kilometers away. Even with our speedster New Horizons probe, reaching Mars takes at least 162 days. Now, imagine going beyond our solar system. The closest star, Proxima Centauri, a staggering 40 trillion kilometers away. With New Horizons speed, it'd take 79,000 years to reach planets around it. Let that sink in. Living on a warming Earth has its challenges, sure, but is Mars or any other planet livable? Way trickier. Earth is our one and only cosmic home. No planet B in the cards. The real answer is understanding that our home planet is the key. It's not about packing our bags for another world. It's about debunking the flawed narrative that survival equals colonizing distant planets. And that's a wrap for today's exploration of space. Now we're letting you have a word over it. What cosmic mysteries or scientific wonders should we dive into next? Drop your suggestions in the comments below, and let's keep this space conversation going. Don't forget to be subscribed so you don't miss the video where we pick up your idea. Until next time, keep playing with your imagination.